welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to Negroes Captured or Sold. And in this edition, we shall be looking at whether it is correct to say slave trade when there was actually no trade in what was Negro land and Guinea from where they captured and sold the Negroes. Now remember, the essence is to find out whether they were actually sold as in goods exchanging hands or they were actually captured the way you would capture a wild animal. That's our interest in this edition. And to you, our dear viewer, it is never our intention to offend anyone with our videos. It is not also our intention to suggest, insinuate or preach hate towards any group, race, tribe or person. There is also no propaganda or any deliberate attempt to misinform anyone with our videos. The goal is for you to look for the books, journals, magazines or other publications referenced and study them yourself. Remember, if the misery of our poor be caused not by the laws of nature but by our institutions, great is our sin. Charles Darwin And from Frederick Douglass, it is easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. And to our topic of today, remember they always say slave trade, as if it was a trade both in Europe, Asia, North and South America, and of course where they captured the slaves from. There was never a trade in Negroland or Guinea or Sudan or Ethiopia as the area was then called. Trading was done after hunt, raid and capture when the slave got to the Middle East or Europe that's in Asia, North America or wherever, but there were no trade in what was in Greenland and Guinea. Negroes were classified differently at that time. We challenge you to research that point, the last bullet point there, that Negroes were classified differently at that time. Please conduct a research on that. We don't want to go any further on that particular bullet point. Let us quickly also look at the Indian wannabe's narrative of how the slaves were actually captured from the United States, shipped to Europe and then back to Africa. For those who think we are attacking Den Calloway, we are not attacking him, we are correcting him. The reason we need to correct him is because his narrative plays into the hands of the slave masters. They must not be allowed to get away with what they did by denying it. And looking for something else to cover it with remember the truth is absolute there is nothing anyone can do about it that you wish that was true will never make it true and it can't be true even if you believe it so our interest is to be able to leverage on that narrative and prove the case beyond all reasonable doubts that there was never a trade in what was negro land and guinea where they captured the slaves from Remember, we are not very sure when they started calling the entire area Africa. It was never Africa that covered the whole area previously. And remember, because of revisionism, they keep changing what they called places. So that way, when you conduct your research, you will lose touch of where you were looking at. For example, if you were looking at Negroland, you are going to see only books that date up to, say, 1900 that had it at Negroland. They had changed the name after that. So you need to bear this very important point in mind. So remember, the Callaway told us that hundreds of thousands of indigenous people were shipped to Europe and Africa as Indian slaves, which is not recorded anywhere else except in his narrative. So he again went further to say they were then shipped from Spain, which is Europe, to Africa as commodity for African resources in the 1630s. Now, if you look at this narrative, you will think that the slaves or Negroes were only shipped to Spain. It did not account for those shipped to England, for those shipped to Portugal, for those shipped to Denmark, and so on and so forth. There again, that collapses, that allegation or that fraud, that lie collapses. Then he goes further to say that these Indian slaves were then shipped back to America from Africa and classified as African slaves. Now you notice that this lie does not accommodate the fact that people age and die. It also does not accommodate the fact of how the slaves were acquired, which is something akin to how they tell the story. They tell you a trade, a trade, without ever telling you 
how the slaves, the Negroes, made it into a slave ship and how the navigations were done. So our interest is to leverage on this because the reason he is saying they were shipped, they were shipped without telling you how people could have just been shipped and after 100 years when that generation would have died, they are shipped again. It's because he thinks and still thinks there was anything called trade in what was Negro land and Guinea because of the slave master's own lie and narrative of a slave trade. So let us just move forward. Let us quickly reference new and complete history of the world, the story of the whole human race and its various nations from the earliest dawn of civilization to the present day by Francis T. Foray and it was published in 1906. And there we see the following, a picture illustrating how Columbus discovered the Americas and it says Columbus first sighting America. Early on the morning of November 12, 1492, Christopher Columbus discovered western land from the deck of his ship Santa Maria. It proved to be one of the Bahama Islands but its exact identity has not yet been established. That's our interest because you notice that where it's saying is America was probably one of the islands. Whatever be the case, it couldn't have just been the United States. So there is no way they could have just started shipping slaves from this 1492. Yes, he did mention that it was recorded by Columbus that they were shipping. So by this time, this is November 1492, there is no way he could have seen anything at this point and they are not sure which island he just discovered so to say but the same book goes further on another page to say the races of mankind and their languages the varieties of mankind have become innumerable by reason of intermingling of blood and of environment of habitation that is of soil and of climate but then it says they are usually reduced to three chief races the white the yellow and the black and with these we can connect a number of intermediate shades due to intermarriages taking place in the borderlands between the three dominant races though all had a common origin yet they at least developed in distinct regions the Aryan white or Indo-European or Caucasian on the plateau of Iran or Arya whence it spread into India northwestern Asia and Europe and the Semitic and Hamithic white in southwestern Asia and not eastern Africa, the yellow or Turanian or Mongolian in northern Asia, China and the Malay peninsulas and islands, and the black in Africa and Australia, the latter however being regarded by certain writers as the remnant of a people antedating the present Tona. The red skins of America seem to be of Mongolian origin, that's our interest, the red skins of America. Remember, they were claiming that the Negroes were indigenous to the Americas, which is certainly not true. So, we then have to remember that before 1492, Negro slavery had started to Europe and Asia, and that it does not make sense that while they were capturing Negroes for sale in Europe and Asia, they were shipping Indians to Europe and then to Africa to come and do what? when the Negroes were already everywhere in Africa at that time. Then the Negroes were shipped and used as beasts of burden. Why would they be shipping Indians to Europe and then to Africa? What were they shipping them for? Remember, one of the reasons they were shipping the Negroes was because the Indians were considered not strong enough to cultivate the Americas or the New World as they called it and the farmlands of Europe as it were. And remember also they convinced the Negroes at that time that the Almighty sent them there to come and cultivate the land. Remember they always used God to deceive the Negro like you hear the so-called Hebrew Israelites today telling you that God said they were going to be slaves for 400 years, thereby somehow discounting all the Negroes that were sold to Europe, Asia before the so-called 1619 of the Americas. So you see how they use God and hide behind God to perpetuate their evil. Now the reason we are taking time to see how we can correct this ugly narrative from Den Calloway and his group is because he plays into the slave master's hands. He wants to somehow find a way to obliterate that history that he was a slave hunter that's why he is busy looking for ways to say oh you are indigenous remember for everything they say always try to ask what is in it for me is 
it about you or them that narrative favors the slave master he will do all he can to make it work because there is nothing he's gonna lose he's not gonna pay you reparations he's not gonna give you your rights in that area he's only gonna take advantage of it to wipe away his uh, sins of the past so to say so let us bear this very important point in mind and please conduct your own research don't listen to what anyone is saying look for the accounts or books written by the slaves at that time that will give you an idea of what could have transpired so now as to whether the negroes were captured or sold let us reference observations on the slave trade and a description of some part of the coast of guinea during a voyage made in 1787 and 1788 in company with Dr. A. Sperman at Captain Arenas by C. B. Wadstrom and it was published in 1789 and there we see the following. First that the author went to the coast of Africa and in his words he said, I went to the coast of Africa not with any commercial views but for the sole purpose of inquiry and observation. I have ever considered the Negroes as a quiet, inoffensive people, happy in themselves and in one another, enjoying the comforts of life without the intervention of toil and trouble. If therefore I had found wars among a people of such dispositions and so situated as to have no motive for them, I should certainly have set them down as having been excited for some diabolical purpose and for none so likely as for the prosecution of the slave trade. Now remember, there were objective writers. Now one of the things these narrative of Indians or Negroes being the same as Indians would do is it's gonna exonerate the slave master from his atrocities on the Negroes. And by the slave masters here, we mean the cabal of both the Europeans and the Arabs and of course the non-Negroes in Africa that were behind the hunt, raid, capture and sell or well shipment of Negroes to all parts of the world as it were. So this author tells you his own impression about the Negroes. They were very peaceful but the slave master was able to convince everybody all over the world that the Negroes were barbaric which we shall ultimately show you books that debunked to them at that time for those who prefer to think that were attacking anybody. Look for the materials referenced and study them yourself. After reading them, you can then come to debate. Don't just come to ask us, how are you sure? When you are seeing the books written by eyewitnesses at that time, you have not read those books. Why then do you question them when you have not read them yourself? That's why we present you with the pages so you read for yourself if you can't find them to read the entire material yourself. So here we see the unhappy captives, many of whom are people of distinction such as princes, priests and persons high in office are conducted by the mandingos in droves of 20, 30 or 40 chained together either to Fort St. Joseph on the river Senegal or Niger in the country of Galam or to places near the river Gambia. Now our simple question to you is if they were sold why would they be called captives at least that should tell you and moreover it says priests and princes and people of high levels so are you telling us that the kings were selling the princes as well or the people we are now selling their princes that again shows you that they were captured it was never a cell there in what was negro land and guinea it was hunt raid and capture so here again it says they set off in parties to surprise the unoffending Negroes and to carry among them all the calamities of war. Now you know what it means to be attacked when you are not prepared for war. You are not at war with anybody. That's how they captured the slaves. Anybody that tells you is a trade in sub-Saharan Africa as they, they call it now is either ignorant or just an outright liar. So it goes further to say many unfortunate prisoners were sent. Notice that he's calling them prisoners. The, the idea of a slave trade was just misconstrued because that's what the slave masters called it in their own places because that's where it was a trade. When the new slaves were captured and they arrived, they were then sold. So there it was hunt, raid and capture. Then in their own place it is the trade. So it is their language. That's how they call it as trade. So it goes further to say, 
I was once curious enough to wish to see some of those that had just arrived. I applied to the director of the company who conducted me to the slave prisons. Notice he called it slave prisons. That's the origin of the prison system you have today. I there saw the unfortunate captives chained two and two together by the foot. The mangled bodies of several of them, whose wounds were still bleeding, exhibited a most shocking spectacle and their situation may be much easier conceived than described. The director of the company, however, used his best endeavors to console them. You see how the prison officer will be telling you, even if you are innocent, that, oh no, there is nothing I can do, sorry, that's exactly what they did as well. The officer will be consoling them, but they've been captured, they, will not, they were not going to be let go because that was the system at that time. The important thing is for you to note that they did not buy the slaves from anybody in Negroland. They deceived the Negroid and Hamitic Baba groups who were not, as written by them, not very intelligent. That's why you see them today too. They are the people they give the weapons, which we shall ultimately show you how they are playing the game today. It is very clear, but hidden in plain sight. And here again it says, at another time, the military who had been sent out to pillage returned with several captives. These consisted of men, women and children. The men as they were brought in exhibited marks of great dejection. Now but they tell you that they buy the slaves from African sold other Africans. So you see what they are running away from. That African sold other Africans was used to cover the, this part. And now this new aboriginal nonsense will be used to cover the slave trade in its entirety so that the next generation will not even know it, it happened at all. Now remember, if you think they don't know what they are doing, if you checked in sub-Saharan Africa, you will see that they plant the lackeys and stooges there as well. Those people make sure that the academic curriculum is also drawn by them. They hide behind the Hamitic and Negroid groups, which we challenge you to investigate. There are certain things that happen there. For example, you see slaves are being sold in the Middle East still. You should ask yourself which type of president will be a brother with someone and hears that his brother has been sold as a slave somewhere because of something like two or three dollars and he or she doesn't go to rescue him. That's because those ones there were their slave raiding partners. Like we tell you, we keep telling you, check the Cameroonian army, check the Nigerian army. Those were the slave hunting terror group. You see where it says the military. That's the military at that time. The Negroes never had an organized army, which we shall ultimately show you if you have not had it before or you have not researched it yourself. That's very important. So they were never sold. They were actually hunted, raided, captured as beasts akin to cattle. So let us digress a bit here to show those who believe that there were no ships to carry the slaves at that time to read something very interesting and it tells us that I am very sorry that humanity obliges me here to divulge a most barbarous practice frequently used by the French traders in the Middle Passage. I have been assured by several of their merchants and captains that when detained by calms or contrary winds occasioning a shortness of provisions and water or when some fatal disease happens to break out among the slaves, they never fail to mix corrosive sublimate or some other active poison with their victuals, and thus coolly dispatch the wretches committed to their charge. They affirm that it would be an act of imprudence to undertake such a voyage unprovided with poisonous drugs, and they boast of being less cruel than the Dutch and the English who in similar circumstances throw the innocent victims overboard without ceremony. So you see some of the things they did in the ships that they tell you that there were no ships. Let us again reference a book called Fighting the Slave Hunters in Central Africa by Alfred J. Swan and it was published in 1910 and our interest is the fact that the title of the book is Fighting the Slave Hunters. Now if it was a sale it would have been fighting the slave traders or slave buyers but now they are fighting the hunters because the slaves were actually hunted they believed that the negroes were not human which if you conducted the most basic of researches you would discover what was saying there so because of that they were actually hunting this is why they did not see it as a scene at that time except those who were actually human the brutal cabal did not see it as anything wrong they were capturing 
humans at that time they called them bollocks at that time so this is all we wanted to reference in this material the title of the book itself says it all fighting the slave hunters if we also reference a tropical dependency an outline of the ancient history of the western sudan with an account of the modern settlement of northern nigeria by flora elshaw lady lugard and it was published in 1905 there we see the following that Livingstone, Baker, Stanley, Cameron and many others have given the testimony of eyewitnesses to the sufferings of the natives whom they demand for slaves caused to be hunted like wild beasts in their homes. So you see they were hunted like wild beasts but you are being told that it was a trade simply because in the western and middle eastern societies they were trading. That's what happens when you have a negro or a slave that didn't behave well, you sold him to another. Or when the slaves landed, the slave merchants will advertise them and say, we have these number of slaves for sale. And then if they had slaves that were not working very hard or they were difficult to um, kind of manage or they suspected could moot me at any time, they put them up for sale. So it is that trade that they did that they are using to label the terror they carried out in sub-Saharan Africa as slave trade. Now remember, it is the same thing they are doing today. If you notice, why the British or American armies will go to fight in other countries? If you check Cameroon, check Nigeria, use Biafra and Ambazonia as your case studies, you will discover that those armies there, which were the slave hunting terror groups, they just gave them uniforms, glorified them, dressed them on the borrowed robes as if they are protecting anyone. If you doubt what we are saying, show people where the so-called Nigerian army has protected them from Fulani headsmen. The Fulanis were the slave hunters at that time. They were classified as Arabs. So this should tell you what the scenario is today. So that when they tell you that Negroes are indigenous, that's the type of distraction. If you take this narrative further, if you were to engage the likes of Den Calloway, just ask him, where did you get the fact that the Negroes were indigenous from? you will discover that he was sold to that dummy. The same way they sold to Jesse Jackson to come and say they preferred to be called African Americans in 1988. You had the term being used by the likes of Malcolm X in the 60s. But they used Jesse Jackson to propagate it, to find an excuse to change the Negro appellation. That's exactly what they did in 1988. So when they want to do anything, they will look for a Negro, condition him to present the story. Then they use it to say, yes, yeah, so this is what they prefer. We give it to them. Whereas they were behind it originally. If you doubt what we're saying, engage Dan Calloway. Ask him to tell you where he got that narrative from. You will discover that somebody sold that dummy to him. No matter how many they are, ask them to tell you, where did you get it from? Which book can I read to see it? If you can ask them that simple question, you will discover that they have no facts. They were just sold that dummy. And again, if you also ask them, what do the Negroes stand to benefit if they were to accept that appellation or to accept that they were indigenous? What do they stand to benefit? Nothing. Because at some point, you will see that things like civil rights will also be denied. They will find a way to wipe it off the records. It will no longer be there. Let us also reference the slave trade in Africa in 1872. And it was written by Etienne Felix Bilox and it was uh, published in 1872. And there we see the following The great manhunt, of which we once knew nothing, carries off annually 70,000 prisoners. The number of the dead that it leaves behind is incalculable. The total certainly cannot be less than 350,000, but it probably amounts to 550,000. The countries in which it exists and to which it introduces incendiarism, devastation and murder are of much greater extent than the whole of Europe. Now again, remember it goes further to say, let not these figures be deemed exaggerations, neither let these horrors be denied, because they have remained so long unknown. Now remember, that's what this narrative of them being indigenous is trying to deny. If you want to understand the slave master, try to look at where he is going and where he is coming from before you believe whatever he is saying. Remember when Jesse Jackson gave them that so-called, they prefer to be called African Americans. He said he was going to bring them closer to their original culture and all that. Now ask yourself, 
what was achieved with that appellation? Nothing. So even if they said, oh, we are in the genus today or tomorrow, or whenever they choose, it's still not, not going to do any advance, any good to the Negroes. But then the slave master will leverage on it and say, oh, they say they are indigenous. It is true, we have discovered they are indigenous. All they are doing is to run away from these records so that nobody will say you are much more barbaric than you are pretending to be. That's the issue, the whole thing. So at least you see that he calls it this great manhunt and goes further down to say it carries with it devastation and murder. So if it was a cell, why would a cell be carrying devastation and murder and all that? Now who was and who were doing it? That should be your question. It was the armies you see that if you looked closer today at places like Nigeria, places like Cameroon, look at Ambazonia, look at Biafra, you will understand who the army are. Ah, the army was the slave hunting terror group. They just gave them uniforms. If you doubt what we are saying, conduct your research. Even if you hold a PhD from Harvard, Oxford, Cambridge, MIT, name it, conduct your research on those armies. You will discover what we have just told you. They are well documented anyway. But it was a hunt, raid and capture. The Muslims called it Razia. It was not a cell in Negroland and Guinea as it were. So here again, it tells us that the human hunt is most profitable and when it's terminated, the Seribaks with their troops go to the port of embarkation. What the unhappy Negroes suffer during the march and in the encampments where they wait the departure, it is impossible to describe. These encampments become the centers of infection when spread the plague and the cholera. Now, we challenge you that is claiming that the slave trade didn't happen to tell us how people could have um, written this in 1872. Some said they were eyewitnesses. The Negroes themselves wrote their own account when they started writing. And yet, here you are telling us it didn't happen. Now, are you telling us that you know more than those that experienced it? Or that you have some magical powers that gives you the right to now say what somebody is telling you was his or her experience is a lie. That's what we want you to explain to us, where you are getting that fact from. That you think it's impossible does not mean it's impossible. It just means that your brain is too small to comprehend it. If you looked at the airplane today and how big it is, that should tell you how big the ships could have been at that time. That your brain is not big enough to understand how big they could have been to carry the slaves does not mean they were not as big as they, they needed to be at that time. Please bear this in mind and please put it in the comment section if you think it was impossible that they could have shipped this number the way they were writing. Remember, we are referencing old materials because we believe the truth will be more in them than in the newer ones. Let us also reference Cardinal Lavigeri and the African Slave Trade, edited by Richard F. Clark, and it was published in 1889. And there we see the following. The cry of peaceful, happy villagers, surprised by night in their sleep, who behold their dwellings reduced to ashes, all who resist put to death, and the remainder dragged away and driven to the market, where human beings are sold like cattle, the cry of interminable troops of miserable captives, men, women and children, sinking from hunger, thirst and despair, slowly expiring in the desert where they are left behind, already more dead than alive for the sake of economizing the scanty nourishment doled out to them or struck down by a cruel blow as an example to strike terror into others as wretched as themselves. Now we challenge you that claims that it was a trade to show us where they were selling themselves together. It was a hunt, raid and capture. And then if somebody was to come and capture you, you now, let's say you were a Negro or a black person, how are you going to follow the person and leave your wife and children? You're going to put up some resistance and of course those that resist are murdered or killed. And who can do it? It's the army. The army is you see. If you doubt what we're saying, go and just investigate silently the armies in sub-Saharan Africa. You will see that they are usually on one side. If you check, you will see they are usually on one side. And which is what we shall look at in subsequent editions. You will understand how they came to be. If you refuse to research yourself, we will conduct the research ourselves and show you what the records are showing. Because remember, it was not every European or every Arab that supported it. Many knew it was evil. 
so they wrote against it at that time so this narrative of negroes being indians and all that is the slave master's game of looking for a way to see how he can wipe off this history so the negroes will still be thinking that oh there is some 400 years when one sky daddy will come down and free them it's not gonna happen they wrote it too which we shall ultimately show you and here it says among the young negroes snatched by us from this hell and restored to liberty there are some who long afterwards wake up every night shrieking fearfully they behold again in their dreams the abominable and bloody sins which they have witnessed so now if you see africa being at war today it is the same group the same people doing it why not ask yourself do you think the us and uk do not know the weapons they produce and sell to the their slave raiding partners are being used for what they are being used for today remember the fulanese do not manufacture anything if you check you will rarely see books or anything innovation by a fulani so how do they get the weapons they use the slave master passes that on to them and they start killing people that's just what they do so you think trump them do not see all those weapons they, they, they send there they do but that's what those that manufacture them lobby for they lobby them to say give it to these people we know they lack the most basic of humanity and common sense that's the only way we can sell our products remember you need to ask yourself the person that made the gun what did he have in mind the person that is producing commercial quantities of it what market is he targeting they target the market where the fools live we already know that the fools live in sub-saharan africa that's where that, that that's why the wars are going on there the armies you see where the slave hunting terror groups those are the fools they use that's why you see a place where there is hunger they can't feed themselves but they have the most sophisticated of military weapons that's why the fools are usually placed in power in those areas and here you see that they say now in the letter they consider the negroes to constitute the lowest grade namely that on a par with cattle the negro in their estimation is as leo the 13th possibly says a beast destined for the yoke so now the moment they convince the less intelligent negroid barbers tuaregs and hermetic groups that these negroes were based destined for the yoke that's all that is needed if you doubt what we're saying just look at sub-saharan africa today because they are convinced they convinced this same group that are the lack basic common sense that these people that are not in the same religions with you deserve to die that's why they are continuing to do mass murders that if you doubt what we are saying all you need to do is investigate that's all come and put it in the comment section that you have investigated and that it is not true when you have done that that's the only time you have the chance to say oh let's engage them on what they are saying but if you have not done that investigation there's no point because you can see what the records are saying as well so here again he says whilst the slave trading bands composed of arabs and half castes and even of coast negroes go armed to the teeth the savage population of the highlands of africa have no other weapons than stones gloves and at best darts and spears they are therefore incapable of coping with the robbers who attack them and of saving themselves but it is not only isolated persons they attack they organize their expeditions as if they were going to war sometimes they proceed alone sometimes in company with neighboring tribes to whom they offer a share of the pillage and who on the morrow become the victims of their town thus they fall at night on defenseless villages setting fire to the straw huts and firing upon everyone they meet the inhabitants try to escape seeking safety in the woods in the huts of impenetrable thickets in the dry beds of rivers in the tall grasses of the valleys they are pursued the aged the men who offer resistance all who cannot be sold in the markets of the interior are killed the women and children assist and you are telling us that oh no it was a trade please if you have any record of where it was a trade between negroes and negroes and how the negroes could have just stayed there and they were sold as if they were cattle we want to say it and remember how unfortunate it is why the negroes were at that time classified as base lower than cattle the slave master was subtle enough to sell it to everyone 
that the Negroes were actually selling themselves, which is what they are doing today. So if you looked at, let's say, a place like Nigeria or Cameroon, between Ambazonia and Biafra, you are telling us that the people that are killing the, the Biafrans are their brothers. And the people that are killing the Ambazonians are also their brothers. Now, tell us, what sense does it make your brother comes to you to say, I don't have a job. I need food. My children are dying of hunger. You take guns from someone else and be shooting him and tell us that, oh no, that they are your brothers. If you look at it, you will see that the ones doing the shooting were exactly the slave hunters. And of course, they lack the most basic of common sense, which you can see yourself if you doubt what we're saying investigate that's all we can tell you remember we we in truth does not fear investigation the reason they are afraid of things like censors and all that is because if the negroes were to know how many they were they will easily say oh okay let two people engage one military man by the time two people engage one military man they will be overwhelmed that's why any semblance of unity they come against them if you notice in sub-saharan africa any type of movement you form that is geared towards freedom they come with it with force with brutal force because the slave master is hiding behind them they lack common sense they lack self-control and that's why they are used if you doubt what we're saying investigate let us also reference a new universal history of the religious rights ceremonies and customs of the whole world and it was written by william hurd and it was published in 1811 and there we see the following nay it is not long since they were bought and sold in England like beasts of burden that's our interest here so you see that it was the same it's only bought in England you see in England you see bought but in this other place you see capture hunt raid troops army guns weapons that's because there it was where they were doing the capturing but here they do the sell. But before we round up, let us look at one more little thing. Let us also reference hunting big game in the wilds of Africa containing thrilling adventures of the famous Roosevelt expedition by J. Martin Miller and it was published in 1909 and there we see the following. Of African trade, two features are the caravans that traverse great distances and the trade in slave that still widely prevails and is accompanied by an immense amount of bloodshed. Now remember, the capturing is not an ordinary thing. There is no way you can just bring a man, put him in a, a ship and just sh ship him the way the Indian wannabes present it as, oh, they were shipped to Europe and then shipped to Africa. It was a brutal terror. And the reason the slave master is trying to propagate that concept of Indians being Negroes or Negroes being Indians is simply to close this chapter of his ugly past so that the Negroes will not point to it to say hey you are much more barbaric than we are so you see the thing that's why you see them always propagating that looking for who to use to sell it our challenge to you is you don't need to believe them Callaway you only need to research it yourself or even ask him okay show me where I can read this thing that's all you need to ask him and he will be lost he won't be able to provide you with any record of whatever he will say he would rather tell you that those things cannot be assessed that they are hiding it meanwhile if they are hiding it how did he know that's the truth of it so now but our interest is no longer in the capture because we are sure by now if you are the type that can study you will understand what it's all about there is no way it could have been a cell it was a hunt raid and capture it was called Razia by Muslims. Our interest is breast milk. Now remember today, an average Negro woman that has her breast full with her baby will be giving cattle milk to her baby as if the baby is actually a calf. Now remember, the Negroes did not agree to this in the past. It was sold to them. When we look at the forbidden fruit, what it actually is, you will understand what we have saying but then we want to show you something so you understand the implication of believing the slave master without investigating what he is saying so here we see where it says it is very singular 
that the Negroes do not understand the milking of their domestic animals and were above measure astonished when the explorer's servants milked the goats and gave the milk to their master and the Negroes often surrounded him in crowds to see him eat hen's eggs, a diet quite new to them although they ate numbers of the large round eggs of the turtle and the still larger crocodile eggs. Now, at that time, Negroes considered those things as life. They did not eat them, especially milk. They never ate milk. They never drank milk. But the slave master found a way to smuggle it into the Bible, which we shall ultimately show you, in order to sell that dummy to them. Now, you see, it says Negroes eat almost all kinds of flesh. But then, the same Negroes were not having milk. They introduced them to milk. In earlier records, they showed that the Negroes did not eat things like pork. That's how they wrote their so-called um, Bible from. They keep telling you they translated it, but they don't have a manuscript. So if they translated it, where is the manuscript? That's one question you should go and ask. They will keep telling you, oh, Red Sea Scrolls. Dead Sea Scrolls were found in the 1940s. The Bibles were written in 18-something. So how are they related? So you need to investigate these things yourself. But our interest is to show you the dangers of when you have a baby, especially if you are a woman, and you give cow milk to your child. You are only making the child less intelligent as human. But we're going to show you one little thing that should prove that to you before we round up. So let us reference the practice of hiring wet nurses, especially those from the fallen in bracket, considered as it affects public health and public morals and it was from a meeting of 1859 and there we see the following the report of the hospital for children at manchester england shows the injurious influence upon the infant constitution from want of breast milk note this very well children who had breast milk alone to the ninth month or longer and some to the age of two years 62.2% were well developed and 14% were badly developed. Of children fed exclusively by hand, there were 10% well developed and 64% badly developed. Our challenge to you is to go and investigate what badly developed means and its implication on you that is feeding your child, your human child, with calf food. That is what the Negroes considered as calf food at that time because very soon we shall show you what they mean by that they are forbidden fruit in the Bible because remember we had consistently told you that the Most High did not write any book never said he wrote any book and all inspiration we would prefer you show us who was inspired we don't know who we don't know where they are buried we don't know where they lived we don't know where they are from so we can't just believe everything hook line and sinker and again, you see why certain things are concealed from you. And this is why they say the best way to hide something from a black man is actually to write them down in a book. You don't know where it started, but you copy. Because the Negro is an emulative race. If you notice the same sex thing, it was the slave masters that started it, brought it. But everywhere you see it today, you will see that it is the Negroes. They have now carried it. It is now the lot. They become the bearers of everything the slave master introduces and the slave master understands this very well. And here we come to the end of this edition of Negroes Captured or Sold. We thank you very much for listening and we do hope you will find time to conduct your own research. Peace.